we don't actually, unfortunately, one of my uh, History of Awesome doesn't get a chance to talk about books as much as I would like, but we sort of have to spend, sort of before we sign off, just a couple minutes talking about Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, we all read it that year, right? <laughs> I mean, the that's actual Nobody Game heard. of Thrones, because the other books are not called right. that. The yeah. book the A Game of Thrones, of the Ice first book in A Song of Ice and Fire, came out in 1996. Uh, it was a success at launch, you know, uh, it sold a at lot launch. of copies, but it wouldn't hit the New York Times bestseller list until 15 years later, until 2011 is when that game became sort of a true a book, massive book. blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. yeah, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. with the show. Or, or, uh, or even it, before the show. Yeah, like it was It was this perfect yeah, the show The show launched, brought it back. Well, but it became a bestseller before the show. Like yeah. it was sort of climbing, like the mm-hmm. books were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the first book didn't hit the oh, New so York Times right bestseller before list. the show came Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I remember it, it went around IGN. The show too. was perfectly it was timed. The, the really? Book, the book went viral before the show was announced, like mm-hmm. before we even thought they would ever turn this into a show because it seemed like impossible, right? Like, yeah. It's Lord of the Rings scale, and like you, could, you couldn't imagine that many books murdering. being turned into it. Yeah. It went kind of viral in the office, like one person told the other, and yeah. like everybody started to read it. We like, uh, by the end, like cool. we had all read the books before the show came out. So fantasy, I read a lot of fantasy, and so I say this with the utmost love. But fantasy is sort of prissy elves, and you have to get the magic staff, and you have to. That's what it was. Like it was this very sort of clean and dry. You know, the heroes the War were good shoes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and uh, Game of Thrones is what really brought dark, gritty fantasy, sort of yeah. grim, dark fantasy to the forefront, and it allowed you know books from people like Brent Weeks and Jim Butcher, yeah. and and it sort of kicked off this fantasy wave that we're still riding to this day. Yeah, 20 years and it later. pulled no punches in the first two chapters. I mean, the first chapter uh, is a murder, as <laughs> as as expected, and then the second. Yeah. You were sort of witnessing uh, one character embrace his duty, but he had to kill someone. Yeah, yeah. and I his mean, kids were there. Say, you know? say what you want about uh, the later mm-hmm. Game of Thrones books. You know, I know, Sam, I know you like them a lot. Big but, fan. but what I like, you like about, the last ones. Yeah, the what last I like about especially. the original really? Game of Thrones the great, is yeah. that uh, last three uh, pages. The original Game of Thrones is a mystery. Like, yeah. who killed John Aaron? And yeah. like, it's really interesting to just see, you know, Ned Stark sort of going around and investigating this well, mystery. Like, and it's it politi- had, it's a political murder too. Yeah. So it, it has this, like, this weird political yeah. intrigue that's normally not in a fantasy book. It's mm-hmm. telling. I feel like at this point the books are uh, just sort of then this happened, then this happened, then mm-hmm. this happened. But the first book has like an arc that it's following where you're sort of peeling back the layers of this onion it, in a really interesting way. And it felt. Way. I mean, it felt like you had these. You felt like you understood the world, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I get it. Jamie's bad, right? Yeah. And and he's the main character, and right. he's he's the second. And like, by when the book was goes, halfway <laughs> over, everything yeah. everything was completely changed. The characters you hated, you started to like, but you felt like it was like this set world still, and like." Yeah. Even though it had an appendix with like every character name, because you couldn't, it, you needed a phone book to read this book, right, to yeah. understand. But then after that first book, I think things changed a lot, and like you know, well, new you know they did because he in, wrote like, that letter to his joys. editor that that got completely yeah. changed. Mm-hmm. Remember that the, the plot line. Uh, what's really funny about early pressing? Well, it's still pressed almost the same way. But if you look at that book. It is so low budget looking. The yep. map inside, it looks like it was made on like a Macintosh in 1988. Yeah, I have that. Yeah, it's so funny. And then it's just like the, the pressing's really cheap. It's cheap paperback. It's like everything about that book is like low budget uh, fantasy. Yeah. So it's so cool to see well, it's it was called popularity. A Song of Ice and Fire. I know. Right? Like, like, which, and like, his name, he, George R.R. R. Martin. Yeah. I mean, come on. R. R. Like, you would never pick that book up on the shelf if somebody didn't tell you it to. It really spread by word of mouth. I mean, yeah. seriously. And you've got to think how many others. Sleeper uh, fantasy and sci-fi books are there out there? I mean, it's just great to see it elevate sci-fi and fantasy to these new heights. Um, Yeah, read The Martian. 